Richard Davis is not your typical professor. That's it. He is not messing around in his classes. You want to do it again? I have Richard's voice saying, Do it again? Forever ingrained in my mind. You gotta cr crack the voice. Baby. That's good. Richard was not a trained educator. First and foremost, he was a performer. Richard Davis was one of the great bass players who had this magnificent sound. In the 1960s and 70s, Davis was an A-list bassist, in demand across genres. I was on top of the world in New York. I was doing everything. He's played with a veritable who's who of American music, from Frank Sinatra to Bruce Springsteen to jazz great Ben Sidron. I met him in New York City. His sound, his approach was profound. I was determined to be good, and I was made to be good because our music director was a fantastic teacher. He's talking about the legendary Captain Walter Diet of Chicago's famed DuSable High School. One of his most famous students was Nat King Cole. He disciplined you in a way that made you want to be the best at what you were doing. I asked him so many questions that he said, come by my house Saturday and we'll talk. I went by his house every Saturday for three years. Anybody want to know anything? <laughs> I do that same thing with my students. And I spend a great deal of time with him. I can only look back and see what I am about today. And it always relates to what I learned from him. And when the opportunity came, Davis chose to follow in his mentor's footsteps. I got a call to come out here, and I said, maybe it's time for me to share some of what I know. Now play C. And I start to teach. And you can go right on up without even using those things again. You meet all these fascinating young people who are learning the instrument that you love, and you say, well, I don't think I want to go back to New York. And he never did. He's been coaxing the best out of UW-Madison bass players for more than 40 years. Jazz gets that out. <laughs> I think jazz should be taught by jazz players. The way the class feels is like everything is just happening. That's why I want you to do on the horn right now. Now it's usually a drop off. Rather than a traditional structure, Davis's classes are more a stream of information, like improvisation, like jazz. It felt like he valued what we wanted to learn. When I teach, I'm learning about myself. Who did that? That was good. In a sense, they're teaching me. We can cover this stuff in our sleep. If you don't get it right away, he's willing to go, well, let's find a different solution for you. And he has to find the right trick for that person. I'm passing on everything I can think to tell them. And so much of it comes from being around Walter Diet. I think he knew every move he was making was the one that would make the student develop. And I do that today. He's always looking out for his bass players and will help us with anything That's in our good. lives. That's good. As he learned from Walter Diet, music is life. <laughs> They're one and the same. One and the same. That's the way I teach. I would spend time talking to students about life experiences. A lot of the stories he's told me have been stories about how to be a better person, how to deal with people. Richard wants you not only to be the best bass player that you can be, but also the best human that you can be. Well, you have to find a way into your own mind to find your own voice, and that's what jazz is about. What's your voice? A big part of the jazz tradition is in the physical embodiment of somebody's life. For him, no, none of the learning that we do stops at the classroom. His lessons flow onto the campus where he tackles issues of equality and race. He was invited to a meeting and the issue was the retention of students of color. And that really inspired Richard. Growing up in the 1930s, Richard didn't study racial inequality. He lived it. I auditioned for symphony orchestras, and nobody accepted me because of my skin color. Well, I just told them I can play your music as well or better <laughs> than you can. I knew what I wanted, and I just let those fools catch up with me. <laughs> He's trying to get a point across. 
music is a form of rebellion. Music is a form of um, social revolution. They should speak out when they say injustice is done. She gets them to understand what he calls the oneness of humankind. And that's what inspires the students. And know what happens? Their whole life changes because of the bass. Perhaps the highest praise is that the same words Davis uses to describe Walter Diet are mirrored back to him by his own students. I used to call him my musical dad. He's almost like an uncle or a grandfather to me. He's my bass professor. He's my life mentor. He's the person that you go to when you got a problem. I don't know, just what isn't he? <laughs> it's a better question, I think. He's changed my life, definitely. And that kind of impact has been repeated time and again with the students who've come through here. He's an institution within an institution. Just like Captain Walter Diet. I'm still listening to him today. <laughs> His legacy is continuing to live through me. I'm teaching to my students. Good. This is how we, in this business, defeat death. We live on in the music. Be sing. We're the next generation. I definitely have been influenced. And I'm going to be teaching music in public schools. And the only thing I tell them, he do this for somebody else. <laughs> That's what you owe me. And they do. Save him, sorry. I'm Bobby, save him, sorry. I'm baby, sorry, baby.